All these 1930s paintings, they're all in my mind. They are all things that I've experienced and gone through when I was younger. The buildings, the adverts, the detail, that's the part of the painting that tells a story. And I thought to myself, I should really let the world see these paintings. And from there on, the paintings just took off. They just caught the imagination of the public. And before I knew where I was, I was famous. <laughs> I, I don't actually think I'm famous, to be honest, to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm just a wee bit better known. Since my wife died, I've lived here by myself. I've learned to cook, clean, go my own messages, get my own groceries in. When this kitchen where I'm sitting just right now, this is where it all happens. I do my painting in here. I've also got a radio and I've got a, one of these things that I talk to and it, it puts music on for me. What's her name? Alexa. That's that's the name. I just say, I better watch what I say, but I'll put her on. There, she's on. Alexa, close down. <laughs> my wife knew I was, I was good at drawing. And when I retired from work, she gave me a present. And when I opened up, it was a box of oil paints. She said, you've always wanted to try oils. She says, well, you've now got time and the opportunity, so go ahead. And by trial and error, I just kept persevering. And as time went on, I got better and better and better. And what you see around me, that's the result. Cleaning materials and my artist coat. I'm sorry I don't have a berry to put on. <laughs> but there you go. I've now got the, the drawn in my mind. Now I want to transfer it to canvas and I paint it in Venetian red, which is a very strong colour. That strong colour gives me a guideline it will stick out through anything else I put on. So this is more like a winter sky. The sun's still there. It's still there above the clouds. And it's casting a sort of golden glow in the clouds, which show up as a yellow sky. But people say, don't get yellow skies. But you do. You get yellow skies, you get green skies, pink skies, purple skies, brown skies. Your sky's any colour if you just keep looking for them. The sun and the clouds play marvellous tricks. Main thing is never to rush a painting. Take your time with it. There's always another day. Uh, it's not like you're battling against the clock. There's plenty of time. Oh yes, I remember the war vividly. I remember the blackouts, I remember the air raids, and I remember all the things that happened. I remember the Clyde Bank air, air raids, that was a very serious thing. I, I, and of course I remember the air raids that took place in Glasgow as well, but I prefer to remember the good things that we did rather than the bad things we suffered. I don't like wars, I don't like people getting killed and that sort of thing. I prefer to Tell stories of joy. Well, what brought joy to the people in the 1930s was the fact that everybody was in the same boat. Nobody was any better off than any others. There was a great camaraderie between people. The cinema was the entertainment of the masses in those days, and it was easy to get to the pictures. All you had to do is find yourself a couple of pennies, a couple of empty jam jars or something, take them into a shop, get the money, and you had the money for the cinema. I used to look at the back of the cinema, and I saw a wee intense white light coming from a wee window. 
I wonder what's happening up there to make that wee light and how it can project a picture this size. Little did I know that I was going to learn sooner rather than later. Then I was released on the 31st of December 1948, which made it three years in the Royal Air Force, all but a week. I went back to the cinemas and uh, I stayed there until 1954. And then television started to raise its ugly head by that time and cinema started to close. So I left the cinema and I joined British Railways and I stayed there until I retired in 1988. When I and my age group have all gone, I mean, I'm 95 now, when we go, what it was like in the 1930s, the stories will go with us. We're out and about in Denison now. We're one of Denison's main streets. It's a block of flats now, but this is what it looked like in the 1930s. There is a drawing of the Denison picture house as it stood and many happy days me and my friends spent in there. We get in on a Saturday afternoon for two old pennies, for tops. And now it's a block of flats. It makes me sad. It makes me sad, but at the same time, they call it progress to move on. And moving on, the cinema's gone and a block of flats is there. So there's homes for people in place of the cinema. We don't want the history to die. We want people to remember the 30s. Now, I hope that I have left a legacy through my paintings for people to see what life was like. He's had a working life, cinema projectionist, RAF, all those years in the railway. And here he is now, 95, Tommy McGowan, the artist. Talk about this city and its changes. Tommy's seen it, Tommy lived it, and he's put it in canvas. I didn't expect such a, a big crowd to turn up today, but you're here, and I'm glad you're here. So thank you. Well, the people that see my paintings in the galleries, uh, for the young people, it's an education. And it also is a walk down memory lane for the people of my age group. It takes them back to the times when they were young and I've heard them talking and they're saying, oh, they remember this and they remember that, that they saw this and they saw that. And the kids that's with them stand looking and say, I don't believe it, but there it is in front of them. If you came here expecting to see masterpieces of fine art, then go home now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see paintings by an amateur artist with no formal training, we just thought about getting paintings done about the time in my life when I was a child. The life and times of Glaswegians in the 1930s. Wait a minute, 1930s? We're only a few short years away from the 2030s. That's a hundred years. It's absolutely crazy. It was a bad time. And it was a good time, if you can make any sense of that. The public have been absolutely wonderful. Every one of them has congratulated me and said how much they've enjoyed it. Nobody has come and said they're rubbish. <laughs> and that, 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 that's good for me.